Okay, this is gonna be a tutorial on the Canon uh, Rebel camera that we have for photographers to check out. So, there's a lot of stuff in the bag that um, you're probably not gonna need on an average shoot, but it's got extra batteries, chargers, cables. Uh, it's got several lenses in here, but the one you're really gonna to wanna to look for uh, is this little guy, the 50 millimeter prime lens. Uh, this is what's gonna make your interviews look really, really nice um, and really, really sharp, even with this older camera. So uh, it's, of course, got a lens cap. You're gonna wanna take the lens cap off. This has got a lens cap, very simple to attach. You're looking for the, the red dot here. Then there's a red dot here. Just gonna match that up, click it on. Uh, to release it, there's a release button right here. Push that in and Twist it, that's how you take the lens off. Uh, powering on, there's a switch right here at the top, on. You're pretty much always gonna wanna be in M here for manual. Of course, you can play with a lot of the other dials, but the M is gonna be set up to work pretty much automatically, um, the way we have it set up. So, on the screen here, there's, there's a lot of things that uh, you're probably not gonna need to pay too much attention to, but uh, just for a brief overview, you can see, that, see here an AF in this corner. That means it's in autofocus mode, which is uh, pretty good uh, on this camera. If you want to switch to manual, you need to go up here to the lens and flip from AF to MF for manual focus, and then you have control over the focus ring here. Uh, for interviews, I would just suggest leaving it in autofocus. The autofocus is not super fast, but it's still good, and it will lock on to your uh, subject and uh, keep them in focus. So generally keep that in AF mode there. Uh, if you go down here a little bit, it's gonna be really hard to see, but there is a, an icon for your resolution and your frame rate. Uh, right now it's set in shooting in 720 at 60 frames per second, which for, for taking it straight to Avid, you're not gonna have too much issue with that. Smaller file size is probably better. If you wanna change that, you can go into the menus and do that, but again, I would just leave that where it is. Still difficult to see, but there's an AWB for auto white balance. Um, typically leave that alone. It's good enough in auto white balance. Uh, down here is what you're really gonna wanna pay attention to though. Uh, some of these uh, numbers, if you can see that. Uh, the 125, that is your shutter speed. Generally, a good rule of thumb is you want your shutter speed to be about double what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting in 60 frames per second, you're gonna want this to be around 120, 125 uh, is a good place to be. Uh, this is the ISO. Generally leave that in auto. Uh, you can play with this if you wanna do some cool effects, but there's not a wide range anyway. So leave that in auto and the camera's gonna do uh, what it thinks is best. This is, um, this is the, the f-stop. This is where you make things look uh, really nice. So the lower the f-stop, the uh, better the depth of field will be. This can go down to a 1.8, which is very good. Uh, for interviews, you're gonna want this at a 1.8, otherwise there's no reason to be using this lens. So if you go up any higher, you're gonna, you're gonna lose that depth of field. So keep that at 1.8 as much as you can. I think that covers a lot of what's on the screen. Um, this is the record button, start, stop for video. You can switch to photo and video here. Um, the battery meter is gonna be right here on top of the screen. It's gonna be difficult to see, I think, but uh, it's there, right there on the screen to see how much battery you have. Other than that, there's probably not a lot of things you're gonna to need to be messing with on the camera here. Uh, to get for the SD card, it's right in here. Yeah, so I'll do a little bit of demonstration now. Okay, so here's just a little side-by-side -side comparison of um, of a chair sitting in the sports office. Uh, you can see here is your standard CX350. We're probably about seven or so feet away. Um, I'm pushed in just a little bit on the CX350 uh, to get the same type of shot that I have with the 50 millimeter prime. So of course with the prime lens, you have no zoom capability. So you have to set up your interview at the right distance in order to uh, achieve the look you're, you're going for. Uh, so you need a little bit of room uh, between you and the subject. Uh, but you can see the difference just very clearly, the, the depth of field you get with the 50 millimeter prime, uh, how it just kind of 
blurs out that background where you don't get that with the CX350. Um, and of course you can really uh, amplify that when you get some nice lighting. This is just the standard office overhead lights. Um, if you get some nice lighting on the front, then of course a little bit of a backlight, uh, you'll really separate your subject from your background, uh, which gives some really, really nice looks. So this is just a quick demonstration of um, how to set up and use and the difference between uh, these two lenses and, and the looks you can achieve. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask. Hope this helps.